I'm Stephanie. Hi, I'm Angela. We are the Ink Mages. Join us as we discuss all things fantasy, world building, story craft, myths and legends, and of course, our own imaginative stories. Welcome to the Ink Mages podcast. We are so excited that you have joined us today because we have a special guest with us. We have author J.D. Fisher with us in the studio. And first off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He has always been an adventurer at heart. He, the Southern Oregon, Southern Californian surfer dreamed of being a fighter pilot, but this love of exploring exciting new worlds led him to create his own and a series of fantasy novels, including Genesis of Chaos, Slaves of Swords, Surge of Shadows, and Tears of Destiny. And his latest thrilling ride is called Servants of Chaos, which we are going to be highlighting today. He's inspired by fantasy great C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. Same here. <laughs> and modern fantasy video games he played with his brother growing up. He weaves powerful allegories into his work. JD lives with his wife and three amazing children with whom he loves spending time near a beach city not far from where he grew up. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me on your <laughs> podcast. I, I feel so honored and privileged and I'm very excited. So um, about something that's nerdy, a uh, sci-fi fantasy with me is uh, I've always been a big Chronicles of Narnia fan. So um, if I had to pick a favorite character, um, I think everyone always picks Aslan because he's just so amazing, you know, because he represents Jesus. Um, but aside from him being like my main character, um, I really like Edmund because mm -hmm. Edmund, he is the redeemable character, you know, from the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe which I think mm -hmm. most people, they read that book or they've seen that movie. So Edmund, he is my favorite because um, he ends up being on the side of the enemy at the beginning, and then he's redeemed by Aslan. And then it's really neat because at the end of uh, the movie, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's in the book too. I, it, I've read it. It's just been a long time. But Aslan gives him the title of Edmund the Just. And I was like, wait a minute, oh, wasn't he right. just on the side of evil? And then <laughs> I was like, well, wait a minute, he's called Edmund the Just. And it was really neat to see in Prince Caspian, he came to Peter's aid when the White Witch was trying to tempt him. Wow. And uh, I love how the movie did it. You know, he, Edmund put, mm -hmm. his so put his sword through the ice, broke the, the image of the White Witch. And he looked at Peter and said, I know you've got it sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I love that. Edmund is also my absolute favorite character. In fact, I've got a character in a current book I'm writing and uh, a character in a book that I am hoping to write soon that is inspired by Edmund because his redemption Ooh. arc is so powerful and he's mm -hmm. the most human character. Like he, He's the most relatable. He's, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and we all want to be able to hear uh, those words from Aslan that Edmund hears. Uh, when yeah. he's forgiven and restored yeah. and everything like that. So I love that, that that is uh, a nerd fact about you. I'm definitely on that bandwagon. <laughs> yes. I think we all love Chronicles of Narnia and grew up with it and probably could talk a whole show about things that stood out to mm. us, you know, from the books. Oh, yeah. So uh, JD, I see that you've written a few like fantasy books. So tell us kind of how your writing journey got started. Okay, so the writing journey actually wasn't my idea. Um, I've always been into math. Um, you know, went to college, graduated with a math degree. I'm a math teacher currently. So um, writing was never my thing. I, I hate to say it, but I just English is just not my thing. I, you know, I did it in, in school. Um, so eventually, uh, what got me on this road was that my brother had passed away uh, in 2004. And he was the one who got me into Narnia and Lord of the Rings. Uh, we were playing fantasy games together, together at that time. So when he passed away, I was going through some of his stuff and he had this piece of paper and the paper had ideas on it for a book or a story he was thinking wow. of. Oh. And that is where the journey began. I picked it up and I was like, well, why don't I kind of write something from this? I mean, these are ideas oh. that we had. Why don't I just take this and maybe make a story out of it? And that's where it all started. 
What an amazing way to take what your brother started and turn it into something incredible. Um, the two main characters of the main storyline, uh, which comes from my very first book, the Slaves of Swords book. <laughs> the two main the cover is cool. It oh, is. It's super cool. Thank you. The two main characters on there are after myself and my brother. So uh, in the video games, I was always what they call the warrior, the tank, because the tank goes yeah. in front and takes damage. So I'm kind of the bigger guy in the cover there with the big sword. And my brother would be nice. the guy that's skinnier, thinner. And his <laughs> abilities were more magical, shape-shifting, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So um, everything that's in, this, in, in my books is always kind of aligned with some kind of theme from my life. So yeah. when that led now to the villain books, um, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Servants of Chaos, I mean, these are some heavy issues, you know? So like the very first one, Genesis of Chaos, um, that jumps into the effect of fathers um, mm -hmm. and father figures. And so in that particular book, uh, it kind of dives into some very bad fathers and the effects mm -hmm. of what it did to their kids. Uh, but there is a father figure in the book who is a positive and a very strong follower of mm -hmm. Anuel. So there are some good parts in the books too that leave hope for the reader. And it's not just like, oh man, this is so downing, so awful, you know? So the cool thing though, is that one of the threads for all the villains in these books is um, they will have their redeemable moment. Some mm -hmm. will choose to continue down their own path but some will um, turn and do the right thing. And I've written now my second villain book and that will complete the villain books because now book three of the main storyline takes the first two main books and the two villain books and they all kind of come together into now book three where everything's gonna kind of collide. And that's why it's called Storm of Chaos. That's gonna be that book. So. Oh, that's mm. fun! I love the names and the titles of mm -hmm. your book. They're they're so good, and they so they go together so well. What was uh, some of the things that inspired that title? Did it just like was it just something you you came up with, or was there something that really inspired those titles? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Oh man, <laughs> so the titles are so interesting because I had when I went through the through the idea for each book. I had no idea what these titles were going to be. You know, I want these books to be cool. I don't want a lame title. And so one of the most trickiest things about the title, I'll bring up the first book again, is that each of my titles always has these blades going across the top yes. and the bottom. Yeah. So then it was like, well, great. I have to now figure out a title so that the letters can turn into blades uh -huh. and that they don't look <laughs> weird, you know? Oh my God. That's so, so funny. I mean, imagine starting the title with a D. How am I going to put a blade on top of that? Right. So it's right. like, oh gosh. So it took some brainstorming. And then mm -hmm. it, I had to think about the theme of the books. And once I got the theme, then I had to brainstorm words. And oh my gosh. That's where going online was great because I could look up synonyms, antonyms, and oh man, it was an adventure. Wow, I would have never thought that that's <laughs> that you had to do that because they just they sound so good together and they sound very much like fantasy. But now when I, I'm looking at the titles, I thought, I thought, wow, okay, that's right. You have them ending on s's or like the last <laughs> one, tears of destiny, ends in a y, so you can at least like, have a story yes. connection. That's a fun fact. That is a fun fact. I like that a lot. Tell us a little bit more about Servants of Chaos. So give us a little bit mm -hmm. about like the, the plot line and your characters in the story that's coming out here. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep my composure here a little bit because Servants of Chaos really has strong accord in my heart. Um, this has definitely been the hardest book for me to write only because uh, this one now, book one, uh, Genesis, Genesis of Chaos dealt with the effect of fathers. Servants of Chaos now deals with the effects of abuse. Mm -hmm. So, um, in this in the story now, um, the character, the main characters that that are on the cover, they go through a series of uh, well, not a series, but they go through abusive situations, 
Um, mm. And that has an effect on their decision on choosing to go down a path that is essentially evil. In their eyes, they see it as, well, this is what happened to me. So this is kind of the logical road that I'm taking. And so, again, it's going to, it's sort of painting a picture of they will have their redeemable moment. But until then, you know, they are choosing a path of their, of their own and it leads to pain, suffering. But again, it, these are themes that happen to them. And because of those things happening to them, they are now outpouring from them th themselves these themes because this is what they've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. And eventually, when we get back to the main storyline, again, they are going to have their opportunity to turn away from that. <laughs> who are your main characters in the story? Like, what? who are they? Are they humans? Like, are they elf creatures? Is there like a <laughs> magic system? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little bit more about that. Okay, okay. So not trying to spoil too much, but um, this is the book cover for it. Now, this is only a proof, only because I haven't gotten my main copy yet because, you know, we've been trying to get it published. But the main characters in this one, um, they are both human uh, and um, they are in a fantasy world, uh, very much like um, Narnia, Lord of the Rings. And, you know, I don't have centaurs and fawns just yet <laughs> uh, but those are fun yes, things to so. think. just yet yeah so there's always fun ways to think of new you know, you know new creatures and things to put in yes but, um but they have the basics humans elves um there's dwarves um there's also what i call fimps they're fairies uh fun so a fun fact about them uh, uh fairies used to be as tall as humans and they used to have visible wings uh, but now they're mm. called fimps because when the curse went over creation in their world, they now shrunk to a small size and they don't have wings. And only mm. through magical means can they do one or the other. They can either take a temporary human form that's tall or they can summon their wings and fly, but they can't do both at the same time. Uh, wow. Okay. I like, I like that limitation. Mm -hmm. I choose the wings. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, what would I choose? Give it like. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the characters, uh, the first character with the red hair, uh, she is kind of just this lovely girl. You know, she's coming of age. She's helping out her dad. Uh, and, you know, dad's concerned. He wants her to have a good life. You know, she's kind of met someone and she's hoping to have this just normal normal good life building on top of the prosperity that her dad has worked hard for you know but then all of a sudden life smacks her right in the face and then everything in the blink of an eye is turned upside down so uh, yeah so for her um i have to say out of the two characters i actually just about cried writing mm -hmm. this because it was like i was painting such a beautiful picture of family oh, and now no. this happens and it was like i don't want to write this on you this is not what i want but this is the story you know so um but one good thing though i, I don't get into gruesome details you know i i just leave it to you know a certain point and then after that you just kind of have to use your own judgment imagination like wow what happened to her you know so but you know most adults would read it and, and they would figure out oh okay this is most likely what happened to her mm. so uh, but yeah when i for these villain books um especially for the abuse i didn't want readers to read something and then be reliving things in their mind right. as they're reading i mean that's not my goal mm -hmm. <laughs> So. You have to be like tactful in how you do it, that there's there's a theme, but you're not wanting to go into graphic details with it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So in that book with the two villains, is it dual POV then? Or um, what's, yeah. Does it um, kind of go back and forth between the two characters? Or is it more of like a narrator, like third person omniscient being told? Okay, so um, the story first focuses on the young girl with the red hair. And then once she goes through her events, uh, she ends up being confronted by the other character. 
Now, the other character has escaped their abusive situation. So for the red hair girl, she, you know, went through just a particular moment. But for the other villain now that's introduced later and confronts her, she has grown up through a continual abusive uh, situation mm -hmm. where it was just, you know, like slavery uh, without end and abuse without end, you know, being beaten and all kinds of stuff. Again, I don't go into, into too, too much detail about that. Um, but there is a particular uh, chapter where right after she's introduced, there's a little bit of a backstory about her where she is walking through a hallway and she's trying to make her escape. And as she's going down this hallway, she's hearing crying, weeping, screaming, and they're all behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And every time she passes the doors, she's hearing something like that. And it's just reminding her, um, wow, this is why I'm escaping. You know, this is the stuff that I've been through. You know, people are being hurt, tortured, and dying in here. And this is why I'm leaving. And so, again, I don't go to too much detail. It's just leaving it to the reader's imagination to figure out, wow, there's some terrible things going on behind these doors. You know, you know, like you want to keep it a clean read, but I do love sometimes how when we allow ourselves uh, to kind of plunder the darkness, like we allow it to go mm -hmm. into that dark place, sometimes it amplifies the light. Mm -hmm. And so there is sometimes that necess necessity, even so that people can relate to your characters, to allow mm -hmm. it to go into that place of like, well, this is where they are. This is the depths mm -hmm. of the darkness, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, it amplifies the light is my mm -hmm. point. So I, I like those stories. They, they carry a huge impact, I feel like. Mm. Okay. There is something along that line. So at certain points, um, there are parts where the books will dive into small pieces of it. So um, for example, the first character, you know, once she's gone through that event, um, she um, is now dealing with the aftermath of it. And so she's kind of suffering inside. She's going through thoughts of like, you know, no one's going to love me anymore. You know, what's my dad mm -hmm. going to think? You know, uh, what if, what do I tell, you know, the man that I want to marry me? Uh, or I'm sorry, elf, because uh, that's, <laughs> she's with an elf. <laughs> what, what am I going to tell him? You know, no one's going to love me. I'm unclean. No one's mm -hmm. going to want me anymore. I'm dirty, you know. And so there are some moments in there where there is this internal conflict, which I wanted to show that internal conflict because then that paints the picture of why she made the decision she made to go down mm -hmm. that particular road of being a villain. So are your main characters going to be coming back in the next one to now interact with all these, your, your two initial guys that are based off of you and your brother going to come in? And uh, I don't want you to give away any spoilers or anything, but now <laughs> my, my interest is peak. Okay. So uh, in book two, um, actually, the villains for this current book, Servants of Chaos, they do make a small appearance. Uh, so they are That's in book funny. two, the main storyline already. So and oh, then once, okay. so once they were already in there, I was like, man, it'd be really nice to know their stories. Why don't I write mm. a book? <laughs> so yes. they are they are there, but now with the deeper details, that's going to make book three even better now. Awesome. And as well, we're going to get. I'm, then I want to jump ahead to that question because I'm like, oh, is there going to be more? You know, like, what's next? <laughs> But maybe that we'll just do that. Yeah. What's next then? Is that going to be the last book in the series or is there a potential for more offshoots? Okay. Well, so for the villain series now, that is going to end it. Um, I was thinking of more books, but for uh, the two books that, uh, that have been written, I think that's more than enough to kind of paint the picture uh, for the bad guys. Uh, I call them the chaotic order. <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of running things in the background, trying to do their own thing to help evil uh, prevail in that world of Lindoria. So uh, now in book three, with all the details from the two villain books, book three, the main storyline will now go forward with everyone, all the 
main uh, series characters, the villain characters, and um, it's going to be a storm of chaos. Oh, Ooh. storm of chaos. Sounds like the thing is, for the first two books, I've kind of written them, written them more of like an adventure, you know? as the characters are going through different places, they're discovering things and, you know, they're figuring, figuring out abilities that they can use together and they're taking down evil. And up until this point now in the, in the story, none of the main storyline characters or good characters have really taken any kind of um, deaths or suffering or anything like that. Oh no. Storm of Chaos is coming in and it's going to uh -oh. really flip a lot of things upside down. Okay, so you said something about abilities. Do certain characters have a have magic? Do you do you have a magic system <laughs> in your world? <laughs> oh yes, yes. Uh, that was one of the things um, I really enjoy doing is world building, thinking about how things work in a world, and because you know, as a as a writer, as writers, as you as you know, um, you've got to stick to the rules of the world that you make. And if you don't stick to those rules, your readers will find it and be like, hey, come on, man. You know, you got to stick with the, the world that you made. Anyway, and in this world, um, they use uh, crystals, which crystals were something that were not really there until that corruption came over the world. The world was perfect at one time. Uh, Annuel himself was there, uh, but then he had to depart for a short time to take care of a rising evil in the ethereal realm, spirit realm. And then it was during that time where um, the inhabitants of Lindoria were tempted, they failed, a corruption came over the world, but then Annuel appeared again and sacrificed himself for the world. And then it was at that moment now that uh, crystals began to appear and they're elemental. So you got like fire, you got earth, you got water. So those are the main three that I've introduced. And I'm really excited to kind of introduce some newer ones uh, in Ooh. Storm of Chaos. So very cool. Yeah, I love that. I love seeing how people come, you know, like just writers when they come up with their worlds and their magic systems and how everything's going to work together. And um, and there's a dip, deep allegorical rich meaning, obviously, it sounds like in your story and in the magic and how it plays out, which is super cool. I love hearing that. Um, what I just am curious, like in your writing process, like in your storytelling process, like what is your favorite thing when you sit down and write a story? What's your favorite thing about that process? Mm. My favorite thing is connecting the story plots because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, hey, this is point A and then I'm trying to get to point B. So how do I bring these together? And then that's for me, that's where the magic happens because then it's like, oh, wait, maybe the readers didn't expect this to happen. This could happen, right? And then sometimes when I got this idea in my head, like, okay, this is the way it's going to play out. But then as I begin to write it, and it's like, no, wait a minute, it shouldn't be that way. Let's do this. And then that's that for me is the fun process. It's kind of mm -hmm. stressful because yeah. that's also where the writer's block happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then when you get those breakthroughs, it's like, oh mm -hmm. yes, you know. So that's for me. That's the stressful but fun part. I really like that. I really like that. I feel like I could say the same that I love when things just align and you tr you are trying to get from point A to point B and you kind of have that plot like, well, I know this is my inciting incident. And so here's where my th third act is going to be, but I don't know how we get there. And so as mm -hmm. the story progresses and your characters make their decisions, it can be surprising how you get there and maybe you didn't expect it to. Right. And then it just feels really rewarding when you're like, I solved it somehow. And it does feel <laughs> like magic. Like even twists you didn't know were like they surprised you. Like I didn't see that twist coming. So this works mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> it is, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's kind of the magic even of being a writer is a, your story surprising you, even you and taking you for a ride a little bit and surprising mm -hmm. you with the twists and the turns that are um, going to happen that you don't know. They don't know. It's almost like you write it and you're like, wow, I don't even know where that piece of story came from you know like yeah. where in my mind how did these things connect and just how it all kind of weaves together you're like when you're done it's this amazing feeling like somehow 
I've managed to put this story together and it weaves together. And I've even had moments where, because uh, my stories deal with a lot of mytho mythology and lore and history that's real. And um, I'll be writing something and I'll be having this bright idea that I think is just coming out of my head. And all of a sudden I'll find out that that's a real place in a real, in, in history that would oh. have been in the lore that I'm writing that I didn't even know That's about. amazing. And oh, you're like, wow. whoa, these kind of magic moments. You're like, somehow I connected with that or I heard about it and I forgot about it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I love that. I think that's really fun. So what advice would you give someone uh, who wants to write a book? Ooh, well, I would, I would suggest search your heart because God always has a reason for the things that are written down. Um, so, you know, maybe I haven't gone through certain things that other people have gone through, but God can use the life experience of each individual and you can write those experiences through your characters and through the things that they go through. And then once you start writing those things down, you begin to want to think about, okay, what theme of, you know, light or redemption or hope do I want to now bring? Because these are things that people go through. So what is the uh, encouragement? What's the hope? What light, what redemption do I want to bring to bring people hope? Mm. Yes, that's good. Having like a mission statement or a why for why you write is kind of, it's going to, it's, it's what's going to keep your skin in the game when you are hitting those moments where you get stuck or you might have people tell you, you can't write, what do you know? So have this, knowing <laughs> that mission and sticking to your why is going to carry you through. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the villain books, I really wanted to paint a picture of, you know, these are normal people you know, and then life smacked them in the face. They all had different circumstances, but yet there is still hope. And that mm -hmm. even through them, they can use their experience to then bring hope and light to other people. So um, without spoiling it, um, some of the characters, one or some, I won't be specific, one or some of the characters eventually, um, they're going to break out of what they're doing. Uh, and sort of like coming back to Narnia. I love C.S. Lewis. He's like one of my mentors. I love it. Um, the, one or more of the characters, they will be given a great responsibility of ruling over people. And then Anuel himself is going to tell them, hey, this is where you came from. And I want you to use that. And I want you to help and love on these people because they're under your care now. And now you're going to be a great ruler and a great help and a great servant because of what you went through. You'll be able to help these people. You'll be able to relate to these people. You'll be able to lift these people up. Love it. It's a powerful theme, stories of hope, story of redemption. I think we can always just really learn from those types of stories and they give us hope in the situations that we're struggling with. So that's, that's my theme too and what I write. So I definitely am meshing with what you're saying. Cool, cool. So tell us where we can find out more information about you or your website so people can find your books. Okay, so you can always go to joellefisherauthor.com, just as you spell it. Uh, I got a website there. Uh, you can also find uh, my stuff on Amazon. You can look up uh, j.d.fisher, uh, Slaves of Swords, you know, that by itself you can pull up the first book and then you know amazon usually links up all the other books as well so uh you can do that uh one of the other things that i'm exploring uh is um uh, creating a manga so uh Ooh, i've been uh, jumping into that another thing that my brother enjoyed we really liked reading mangas watching anime so one of the things i'm doing now is uh jumping into a sci-fi fantasy series. I call it Soul Arms. Ooh, uh, that's cool. Ooh. And uh, it's really cool. Um, fun fact, this world is a parallel world to my book series. Oh, neat. And, and I'm even now toying the idea of grabbing one of my characters, pulling him through portals, and actually putting <laughs> him in my fantasy story for a purpose and then once his Ooh. purpose is done he is then going to return 
Wow. And one of the cool things I'm doing with that is that every time one of these kind of characters shows up, it's always a match to one of the other characters in their world. So, for example, you know, if you were to look at this, which is kind of a small spoiler. So the names of the characters, I almost keep the same across the board, maybe just a slight change if they're in a parallel world. So one of the things I'm toying with would be something like, you know, maybe one of this guy, his character in that parallel world crosses over and then they get to actually meet each other. And oh, then no. they're like, you know, they're like, hey, I was sent here to tell you this. You need to do this. And then their purpose is finished and then they get to return back to their normal place. You know? Oh so. man, that's so cool. Oh. It makes me really excited to read the, oh, I can't wait for the manga. That's going to be so awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, so that you can actually find on Tapas, T-A-P-A-S, Tapas. And you can just look it up and you can type in soul arms. I think I've got now five chapters posted there. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So for this one, I'm just posting it online. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, and one of the things I'm also toying with the idea of is taking my fantasy books and changing them over to mangas also. So, JD, thank you so much for being on the Ink Mages. We super loved having you on the show. Be ready to pick up his book. It's going to be on Amazon on the 27th. So support him, buy his books, buy his previous books. Get caught up. Get ready to dive into the adventure. And again, the book launching is Servants of Chaos. And that is part of his villain series. So that's going to be epic and awesome. We love having you on the Ink Mages. Please leave us a comment, like, share, encourage your friends to follow us. We have other author interviews and some other really fun episodes planned for you. So please stay tuned and we'll see you next time.